Welcome. In front of me is a Huawei MediaPad 11.5 from 2023. And today I'll go over a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So anyway, let's just get straight into it by opening up our settings. And in here, we're gonna begin with the display section where most of the interesting things are usually located in anyway. So display brightness. And here we have things like dark mode. So we can select a uh, dark mode, which is all day. So that's basically just on and off, right? But above that, you do have an option for dark mode that is scheduled and you can select a start and end time at which it will enable it. So it gives you basically the two different modes, dark and light at the same time and enables the one, like the dark one at night, which arguably would be the best time to enable it. Now moving on to the next option, it's going to be the color temperature. And here we have a couple different ones. We have default, warm, cold. So if you find it that your device seems a little bit too saturated or uh, you want it a little bit more maybe warmer for like reading, uh, if you tend to read on your tablet, then you probably want the warm mode. Uh, cold to me personally, it's not necessarily what I'm looking for. And in addition, you can move this around, I guess if you want, if you select it. Oh, never mind, we can't move it around. So there usually would be a custom mode, but I guess Huawei well, decided to not give you that. Oh, no, there we go, we can we just have to be very precise at grabbing the little dot. So there we go. Uh, as you can see, once you actually grab it, you can move it around. And it does switch, uh, switch colors, as you can see. Now, moving it at the very edges are the basically extremities, so probably you don't want to have it like in these kind of extremities. Uh, like I mentioned, if you want some like warmer tones, then probably you want to go to the reddish, orangish colors. And this one, this one will be pretty good for reading. I'm gonna select default. Now, moving on, we have the refresh rate right below that, and we have dynamic, high, and standard. Now, if all you do on your device is, for instance, watch Netflix slash YouTube, you might be interested in selecting the standard, which will give you a better battery life uh, in general. So if you tend to watch uh, only that and primarily use your tablet for that, then I recommend selecting it for well, to standard because YouTube will be running at 60. So your display running at 120 will not have any additional benefit for, net, for instance, YouTube experience. And Netflix and any kind of streaming platforms, TV shows, movies are primarily in 24 frames. Again, going 120 completely defeats the purpose. Your display will be running at that refresh rate when there's any kind of moving content. Uh, but obviously the content that you will be watching caps at 24 therefore wasting a lot of the refresh rate that you're pumping through the display for no reason, giving you a shorter battery life. So I recommend selecting that to standard if that is something that you primarily do on your device. Uh, for different kind of like tasks, for instance, just scrolling through, browsing, and doing all kinds of different things on your device, dynamic will be a pretty good option because it uh, incorporates the two different refresh rates at the same time. So 120 when you're starting to, for instance, scroll up and down, uh, or have any kind of content that is moving on the display, which scrolling does consider as a moving content. And when there is nothing moving on a display, like right now, it will switch to 60, preserving a little bit of a battery life. Now, moving on into another option, it's going to be the senior mode. Now this obviously, as the name would imply, will be primarily designed for elderly people. When enabled, it will, uh, what do we have right here? So we have magnif magnification, and holy crap, this is only second one. Ooh, oh boy, oh boy, this can get pretty big. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, uh, as you can see, it's, it can get pretty extensive. Now we have also touch duration, not exactly sure what that refers to. I just touch duration based on your personal preference. Oh, so when you tend to press your uh, display, that is something that my grandma would love, considering she will always touch something. So yeah, this will allow you to select a uh, duration for the uh, for how long you have to press something to actually count as a touch input on the display. Uh, so 
might be useful to some people. Uh, it's a very niche option that I have only seen for the very first time, but for elderly people, it might be a pretty good option. Especially that it gives you a visual indication on how long you've been pressing the display. As you can see, there is a circle forming with a the little like loading around it. So yeah, might be useful to some people. Actually, let's... Oh boy. There we go. So I'm going to turn that off. So it looks like the simple mode only increases the actual uh, font size and just the, the touch duration. Not much more to it, uh, unfortunately. Now, moving on to the next option is the status bar, which is also linked right here. You can also navigate to the status bar and oh, notifications and status bar and status bar. And here we have the simple display. Now, this will hide uh, un unnecessary toggles like Bluetooth, as you can see, and just simplifies the visual style of the status bar. I personally like this because I don't really care for things like hotspots, Bluetooth and all that crap. Uh, NFC specifically on the phone because that is something that I primarily have almost always enabled so I don't really need to know that it's enabled but it's cluttering my status bar. This kind of simplifies it and gets rid of it which is a really nice option. Now additional option that you can change right here is the battery presented if you want to uh, which obviously is under the battery and uh, in a different section so right here but we have a redirect from it from the notifications and status bar. And we have battery percentages and we have a couple different options so we have don't show uh, next to the battery or inside of the battery which is what i would prefer it again goes along with the simplifying your status bar keeping it much cleaner and as you can see now my percentages inside of the battery and still it shows me the indication of how charged it is with the uh with the bar now with that being said there is one last thing that i'm going to show you which is the uh, multitasking on this device. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but uh, it seems like I cannot access the status bar or whenever, not status bar, the dock or whatever you want to call it, this at the bottom, which I would presume should be accessible to us at, when we're in the apps. That's kind of how it looks like and some uh, how most other devices utilize it, but either it's bugged or it's just not intended to be used that way. But in any case, you can multitask with applications. So we can go to the recent applications and in here you'll find this tiny little icon when you press on it it will open it up in this kind of uh, split view or pop-up view you can move it around you can uh, as you can see drag it to the top and maximize it let's go back to it we also have a couple options like maximize minimize which will hide it to the side and a closing option along with dragging it around so you can move it to the sides and you can also as you see minimize it by just dragging it to one of the sides and this will work also on this way one as well and if i'm correct you, we are only limited to showing only one of these so let's check if that is the case if i'm correct oh that was dumb of me anyway let's pick something else Oh, okay, so it actually shows more more than one. I was pretty sure that when I was unboxing it, it only cups to, to one. Uh, but in any case, you can then tap on it and have access to a couple different... Not what I wanted to do. Uh, to a couple different applications, uh, and you can just scroll through them and pick them to maximize it. Oops. And as you can see, you can have multiple of them at the same time. Multiple as in looks like two apparently and the third one can be open as a full screen application all right it's open already so here we have music uh, running as a full screen application and two other ones in here now for some stupid reason as you can see when you get any kind of pop-up on here it completely re removes the ability for you to move the actual application around so, as you can see, why? So, there might be a little bit of a gimmicky uh, options to this, uh, something that you might need to get, get used to. But in any case, it still allows you to split screen or multitask on this device, which is pretty nice. Now, anyway, with this being said, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.